Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another video. Finally, finally have some content for you guys. Finally getting back on a bike. I'm super stoked. Today's gonna be a fun one. I've wanted one of these bikes for a long time. I decided I'm gonna do it as a surprise type video, so I'm not gonna show you guys what it is, but I've been looking at these bikes for as long as I can remember. I've always wanted one, but could never really justify getting one because it's kind of a weird bike. But um, this, I'm gonna have another bike coming. This is definitely not like my one and only bike I'm gonna get. This is a this is a secondary bike. So I, I wanted to get this. It's a cheap project, it'll be fun. It needs a little bit of work, so I'll be able to work on it, get some content up for you guys, and then have some fun with it. You guys will see, it'll be, it'll be fun. But I really do appreciate the crazy support you guys have been giving the channel. I had all the comments and stuff from my accident. It really does mean a lot, and I really, really do appreciate that. I'm gonna be buying another bike, but right now it just doesn't really make sense with my medical payments and medical bills and all that type of stuff. It's not really smart to be go drop $15,000 on a bike right now. So I'm gonna have to wait for that, but this is gonna be a fun project. And this bike is gonna cost less than what it costs to register my Husqvarna. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like and subscribe. I'm putting a lot into these videos and it helps me out tremendously. It doesn't cost you guys anything. I appreciate it a ton. Thank you to everybody who subbed. We're almost to 10,000. That'll be absolutely insane getting to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I'd appreciate it more than you guys know. But yeah, when you're going to buy a bike, this, so this is a fairly far drive. It's probably like an hour and a half away. It's down in San Diego. And um, one thing to always go through when you're going to get a bike, go through, make sure you have your cash, make sure you have a bill of sale, make sure you have a pin, make sure you have your straps, make sure you have everything you need. Think about going through, getting the bike, make sure you have everything you need to get it. It makes everything go so much smoother. I've had deals where I show up and I forget to buy straps, then I gotta go to Home Depot and get straps and they're closed and it just turns into a nightmare. So always make sure you go through that checklist going to get a bike. Another thing too is I bought this bike sight unseen. There was someone else coming to look at it and I bought, like I said, like 50 plus bikes. So I'm good at negotiating and stuff like that. But for something this good of a deal and stuff, it, to me it was worth it to just buy it sight unseen. I could tell from the pictures that I, it's worth at a minimum what I'm paying for it. So I'm not too worried about it, but definitely, I've only bought like two or three bikes like that. And it's definitely not the best way to buy bikes and you can definitely, definitely bite you. But for this bike, I talked to the guy on the phone, he seems cool, seems reasonable, so I just went ahead and bought it, that way no one else could pick it up, and um, hopefully it works out, we'll see. Alright, well enough talking, I will go ahead and get on the road, I got like an hour, hour and a half drive ahead of me, and I will catch up with you guys when I am there. <laughs> Here's the bike. Nineteen eighty four Honda Goldwing. Check out Chester with his big bike. It's that kind of beast. But... It is. It's the beast. But it's a nice beast. Look nice at how beast. beautiful that is. God, that's nice. Oh, God. In the sun, it's beautiful. That was close, yeah. but we did it. Oh, this will be a fun project though. I'm still getting like a, I, I wasn't gonna buy S1000 this morning, but it fell through. Uh huh. I'm still gonna get like something, like a sport bike or a supermoto that I can go have fun on, but I just want something to like go to Vegas and just. This'll do it, this'll do it. And it said it doesn't need much. If you know carburetors. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I literally had four or five places that I called, plus my, my personal mechanic here in El Cajon that's done a gold wing for me before. And he said, never again. <laughs> Cause he goes, Manny, I, can, I can't charge you the time what it took. He goes, I'm doing it out of my love for bikes. 
and you, you know, because I do his printing and stuff. Oh, yeah. He goes, otherwise? He goes, oh, I've never done this. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Um, I've got, uh, not Staybill, but I've got a, what's the other one? It's, uh, it's I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I put in there, but I've, I've got some car, some stuff to, to, uh, stable the fuel. I oh, drained, okay. I sucked out the bad fuel. Oh, yeah, so I was going to, yeah, I was going to ask you, so I, can I, do I need to drain this fuel, or do you think it's... No, stuff I put in there is good. Okay. Nope. Yeah, yeah you've got the best contacts, you've got the crash yeah. bars in the back. The yeah. Alrighty, loaded up, ready to go home. I'm dripping sweat, it is like 100 degrees outside to be loading all this up, but it's worth it. I'm glad I got to come get it today instead of waiting until tomorrow. But let's answer the question everybody's wondering, why did I buy a 1984 Honda Goldwing with 70,000 miles? I know this is a weird bike, not compared to what, not usually what I have on my channel. But the reason I bought this bike is because this isn't a primary bike. This isn't the only bike I'll have, but I wanted something I could jump on the highway with go ride to Vegas, go ride to Northern California, go ride to Arizona, and just have something to go jump on the highway, listen to music, and just cruise and put a dumb amount of miles on and not have to worry about running through expensive tires, expensive valve checks, and all that type of stuff, and oil changes every thousand miles like I do on my sport bikes. Yeah, so like I was saying, I don't think I could ever own one of these as my only bike, for sure. It's definitely a massive, massive, heavy bike. It's not something I'm gonna go run through the canyons, most likely. It's definitely just gonna be, like I said, I got it for, I paid um, $1,150 for it. So that's less than I paid to register the Husky. So basically it's just kind of like, not necessarily a beater bike, but just like if I wanna go to the gym, I can just throw on a hoodie and go just ride over there and have something that's kind of like a car. It's just comfy, it'll be fun, maybe put some pipes on it. So that's one thing I'm considering. I don't know what you guys think about this, but maybe, depending on how the bike handles and how it rides, I'm considering stripping it down and turning it into like a cafe. It's a massive motor and you can strip these things down and put some cool bars on them and stuff and make them into sick cafe racers and then still have it for the same purpose, but just maybe turn it into something cool. Like I said, still working on getting like my proper bike, like a, a sport bike or a dirt bike or something like that. But um, like I said, just not really smart to drop 15,000 on a bike right now with all the medical bills and stuff I've gone on. But I promise that is coming soon. And I still also can, can't can really ride right now. Like I could probably ride the Goldwing just cause it's a big boat and I, you're not really doing anything. But I wouldn't feel comfortable getting on a sport bike or a Supermoto cause I still have broken bones and stuff. So I shouldn't be, riding like a dirt bike or anything right now. That was pretty gnarly loading it up. This thing is heavy. Like the heaviest bike I've ever owned was the Honda Blackbird, which was, um, the Honda Blackbird was around, I wanna say like five or 600 pounds. So it was heavy, but it wasn't, I would say this thing's probably closer to like eight or 900. Like it is a monster of a bike, but that's why it'll cruise on the highway forever and ever. Like these things do 300,000 miles, no problem with a massive windscreen speakers it'll be fun to just jump on the highway and cruise with it but let's get this thing home and see if i can unload this thing with my dad when i get home i'll start it for you guys and i'll kind of do a more in-depth of what the bike needs and kind of do a more thorough walk around as well and welcome to california doing 10 miles an hour on the highway and it looks like it's like this for a while so Probably be home in like an hour or so. Sun should still be up, so that'll be good. We'll be able to get some good pics and videos of the bike. Finally home. Everything looks like it stayed in the trailer good. That's good for sure. Oh. Cool. guys now we're home I can actually walk through a little bit more thoroughly and show you guys what I think is wrong so far so one good thing it does start like fairly easily but as you can see it doesn't run 
So it's obviously, it did sit for a while with California gas in it, so it makes sense carbs are plugged up, so that'll be fairly easy job. Just gotta pull these carbs out, get them cleaned up, probably do a carb rebuild while I'm in there. The other problem, the rear brake. The rear brake has no pressure, and he said it was leaking from the line, so I'm most likely gonna have to chase this line and replace that line. And then the last issue is a leaky fork seal. So most likely do a fork rebuild, fix that brake, clean the carbs, and then it's ready to do some road trips. Good things about the bike, it did come with brand new Michelin tires, so that's a huge plus. These are what I would have run on the bike anyway, so it's nice to have these on there. Gives you a lot of confidence to have nice tires. Look at the storage space. It's even got like a mirror back there. You could literally live out of one of these things. Like that's the goal. I just want to go do some road trips, do some miles, have a bike that's shaft driven. So I don't have to worry about running through chain and sprockets. Could do oil changes way later than I do on sport bikes. Burn through some cheaper tires. Don't have to worry about that. It'll be a fun bike. Let me know what you guys think about stripping it down. So imagine getting rid of this, getting rid of all that, and then getting rid of all this. And it would just be like a naked bobber type bike. I think that'd be pretty fun too. I gotta see how it handles, not rides first, obviously. But I think if I'm gonna keep it, that's probably what I'll end up doing. It's definitely got some cool touches. And check this out, it's got these pegs up here so you could just sprawl your legs out, lean back, chill, got the radio going. This thing's gonna be fun. And look how, I mean, the windscreen comes up above my head, so there's like zero wind. And it's got like these vents down here to let air through and stuff. This thing's gonna be a couch on the highway, I cannot wait. But like I said guys, this is not the bike I'm getting long term. This is just a fun project, go do some road trips on, have some fun with it, and then I'll definitely be getting another bike still. I just couldn't really pass up on this for $1,000. It'll be a super fun project, give me some content, and it'll be a bike I can just go crank miles on and not have to worry about putting on $500 tires every 2,000 miles. But thank you guys for tuning into the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Yeah, we just kids with a dream to get out. No, we gonna make it one day. I ain't got a doubt. I'm gonna do it for myself. I'm gonna do it for the crew. We don't care about you. We can see right through. Yeah, we just kids with a dream to get out.